Hey, how's it going? This is my 2003 Kubota B7500 tractor. If you're watching this video, you're either interested in learning something about this or you're renting it from me because I rent this machine also. If you're interested in renting, feel free to comment or shoot me a message. Uh, so first in this video, I'm going to go over the basic controls of this tractor and then we'll go into a few other key points specifics that uh, anybody operating this should know. So to start, we'll go over here to the controls. Um, if you can see here, this is your key switch right here, and this is the stop switch. To stop this tractor, you have to pull this out. That is the only way to shut this off. And I, I say this now because that's very important that you should be able to shut this vehicle off. So to start this unit, you're going to make sure, A, that you're in neutral on your PTO. Uh, this lever here turns your PTO shaft on the back, the drive shaft, on and off. It has to be in the middle neutral position. It can only go one way to the 540 RPM because I have it locked out so you can't go to the higher RPMs. You don't need that. So to start, you push that top stop switch in to turn the fuel on, push the clutch in, turn the key. Now if you go one click, you'll see the glow plug indicator light come on right here, an orange light on the left. You don't need that usually. Uh, unless it's cold out, but so then go ahead and crank it up. It'll fire right up All right Now you have a two range transmission anything you do I'm gonna shut this off real quick Anything you do with this vehicle on the left side requires the use of the clutch So if you want to turn your PTO on to turn the tiller you push the clutch in Put this on always make sure the tiller or any implement is lifted first like a mower Let go of the clutch and that'll start to rotate Okay, now let's say you want to, you, you have a two range transmission on this, high and low, and neutral in between. So if you're driving a tractor around a yard, you're going to mostly be in high. Uh, if you're doing loader work and you require extra power, you're going to push the clutch in, shift in to low. Uh, sometimes it won't always go direct right into low. You have to let go of the clutch, push it again. When the engine's running, it will go into low. All right, we'll leave it in high for now. Uh, come around the other side over here. Your other ba basic controls are your front loader. We'll fire this up. Hopefully you can hear me over the engine. Down as you go up. Up and down. To the right. Curls the bucket that way. Curls this way. So pretty basic there. Um, to move forward on this vehicle, it has a hydrostatic transmission. So as long as we're in either high or low, these pedals down here, you ease, slowly push on this one and just slowly start moving. Don't jam the pedal real hard, it's not good for the, for the transmission. To go reverse, you just push it backwards right here. You can see this pedal right here, you go backwards. Okay, simple enough. Anytime you get off the tractor, it's a really good idea to set the parking brake because otherwise it can continue to roll. To set the parking brake, you go ahead and push this brake in here. Hold it down, and then right here, this right button right here, you push this down, hold that there, and let go of the pedal. Now your pedal's down. To release the parking brake, you simply push the pedal, and this will get re release here. If you're operating this tractor on hills or slopes or anything like that, it does have right here, uh, a it has a brake on each side. This is your left brake and right brake. And normally when you press either one, they move together. You can flip this lever over here, and now you have two different brakes in case you're operating on a slope or you get into a tight jam or something like that. Speaking of slopes, if you are operating on any slopes at all or doing any major front loader work, you'll definitely want to put your rollover protection up. And to put that up, all you do is take, come around the back side of here, you take these two cotter pins out. This one should be in here. Probably rattle that. You take these two out, twist these pins out. They thread out. You'll throw the roll over up, put the pins back in in the other hole here. And that should, you know, unless you have problems with overhead clearances, that should always be up. Watch your overhead clearance when it is up. Uh, now, I know I'm jumping around here, but there's, there's a lot of different things to know. So come around this side. I'll show you real quick even though I already uh, showed you how to use a tiller. Um, but basically, to run the tiller, push the clutch in, start it up. You'll push, never operate this or this without pushing the clutch, like I already said before. Push the clutch, make sure the tiller's up, let go of the clutch. Now, the RPM you'll be using, you won't be tilling at that RPM. Anytime you're operating this tractor, your RPM is right here. Right now it's on rabbit speed. I'm gonna bring this up. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this lever right here up so the RPMs right around there. And now you can see the tiller is tilling. So that's a good thing. Alright, some other controls you'll want to know about here, or you'll be asking about, are your lights are right here, you flip this over once, that'll turn your headlights on. Your blinkers are right here, which you're probably not going to need. Uh, and then this other lever right here, this is actually for a cruise control. If you were to push the, the gas pedal down and then set this, that will set your cruise control. Not going to need that because you ain't mowing lawns with this thing. Um, also one... Uh, hop, come around the other side over here. Find this up again. To raise and lower your PTO is this right here. Now you'll see right now, look at the tiller, it's not going anywhere. And that's because, come down here, under the seat, you, this is your um, control lever for the PTO. If this is all the way tight, that means the PTO won't drop or lower. Uh, it will raise still, but it won't drop. So all you gotta do is crack that a little bit that way, and now come to the back again. And see this lever right here, watch the tiller too. If I push this forward, that'll slowly lower. So, to raise it, push it back. Four wheel drive is right here. When it's in forward, it's in two wheel, you should leave it in that most of the time. If you need four wheel, you don't have to use the clutch, just throw it in four wheel drive. Um, now, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you a few other things here, if you're still watching, and that is, if you hit a rock with this tiller, uh, it's okay, but if you hit a big boulder or a huge root, it has a protection device called a shear pin on the drive shaft. So how to access that is I made a little spring right here. You just pop this spring off here, pull the cover up, and slide it forward. There's a bolt on this jive shaft right here. If it, if it hits something really big, it'll break this bolt, and I have new bolts under the seat right here. If you happen to do that, I do have some bolts in here that you can use. Um, otherwise, I can't really think of too much. Um, my only tips I'll say is you know, take it easy on this machine until you're comfortable. You will get comfortable within a half hour or, or so to an hour of driving this machine and getting comfortable with the controls, and then you can start being a little more fluid. But until then, take it easy on the pedals, easy on the controls, and really, you know, it's my baby. So, uh, so take her easy. Um, and this is a, a top-heavy machine, so if you got a, a, a big bucket of stone in there and you're on any kind of inclines, it can it can flip over. So I suggest if you have a heavy bucket in there, try to keep the bucket low because that way if it does go to flip, you can drop the bucket immediately. And definitely keeping this up will do one of two things. It will save your life and it will help save the tractor's life from bending everything out of control or, or you know, worse, breaking your neck or your back or something like that. Uh, however, let's, let's go back to this. Very key, very uh, important feature here. If you do have this up, you're a lot safer if you buckle yourself in um, because then you'll stay in place when it rolls over and this will save your life. Any other questions, feel free to comment. Sorry if I, I jumped around so much. Um, there's still some things I'm thinking of. This takes diesel only. Right here is where the fuel goes. It only takes diesel. Do not put gas in it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. So I'm back again. All right, after we pause it, a couple things I may have forgot to mention are this does have a differential lock right here. What that does is lock both rear wheels together in case you get stuck in the mud. That'll give you some extra traction. So with a combination of four-wheel drive and the differential lock, this thing's pretty hard to get stuck. Uh, another very important thing is your warning lights here. If you're ever running this tractor, battery light comes on, no big deal. You got your indicators, whatever. That stuff I'm not worried about. But if this red oil light comes on, that means the engine has no oil pressure. Stop it immediately and call me. Or if you're feeling inclined, come over here and this is how you pop the hood. You turn this, raise up the hood. Come around the other side here. Your oil dipstick is you simply pull back on the cover here and then you have an oil dipstick right here. I just changed it so it's nice and clear on there, but if that happens to be low, uh, you can put 10W30 or 15W40, any oil is okay, uh, but just make sure to call me and, and let me know, and then we, you know, any multi-grade uh, motor oil would be fine. Uh, anything else under here you don't have to mess with. Another very key uh, thing here, this has a dipstick right here for the transmission. Uh, you don't have to mess with that, and, and please don't, but... 
because I've had people in the past put motor oil, you fill this transmission right here. But this transmission takes this fluid only, Kubota UDT, and it takes like four or five gallons. It's very expensive. So if you pour some other oil in there that's not approved, uh, we'll be in trouble. So anyway, I think I've, I'm, I'm not forgetting too much here. Sorry then again about jumping around. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good day and Kubota safe.